Creepy vibes you'd sometimes get wandering the halls of your high school late at night or after hours. Whether it was waiting to get picked up after play practice, working on a project in the computer lab, or even just your typical after-school detention, high schools always seem to take on this really eerie, unsettling feeling once the sun goes down and everyone else clears out. Those long, empty hallways and dark, vacant classrooms just give off these super ominous vibes that wouldn't be out of place in a cheesy 90s horror flick. And as someone who spent a ton of late nights roaming my old alma mater, I can tell you from experience, that dark, foreboding atmosphere can seriously mess with your head sometimes. Of course, most of the time, it's just your typical squeaky lockers and flickering fluorescent lights playing tricks on you. But every once in a while, some seriously messed up, inexplicable stuff would go down inside those haunted hallways that was flat out terrifying. So for this video, I've collected three of the most bone-chilling, nightmare-inducing true stories from fellow students and faculty who lived through their own horrifying encounters at high schools across the country. Prepare to sleep with the lights on tonight, guys, because this shit is no joke. The mutilated janitor, our first story, comes from a high school in rural Pennsylvania, and it was shared by Michael, who was a freshman biology student there back in 2002. Like a lot of bright students, Michael took advantage of his school's policy that allowed kids to come in before first period to study or work on assignments in the library. Every morning, around 6.45 a.m., Michael would beat the morning rush and quietly let himself into the library through the back entrance to get a head start on his homework or studying. One morning in late October, as Michael was turning the corner to the back library doors, he noticed one of the janitorial. Supply closets was wide open and the lights were on inside. This struck him as pretty weird, since the custodial staff didn't typically get in until around 7 a.m. Nevertheless, Michael continued on to the library, not giving it a second thought. About 15 minutes later, Michael was sitting at a study corral going over his biology notes when a sudden noise made him practically jump out of his skin. It sounded like something heavy being dragged across the floor followed by a weird groaning noise. The noises seemed to be coming from that still open supply closet down the hall. Feeling a little creeped out, but mostly just annoyed at being interrupted, Michael decided to discreetly take a peek and see if some clumsy janitor had just come in early. As he poked his head around the corner, his eyes fell upon a sight straight out of a slasher movie that would be seared into his brain forever. There, in the middle of the hallway, in a massive pool of blood, were what appeared to be body parts and internal organs strewn all over the floor. As Michael's eyes followed the grotesque trail, he saw it led into that supply closet, where two severed legs were sticking out, as if something or someone had dragged a human body in there and torn it to shreds. Just then, a deep, gurgling moan escaped that closet, freezing Michael's blood. At that moment, the hallway lights immediately shut off, leaving only the light from the supply closet illuminating the horrific scene in front of Michael. Too terrified to even scream, Michael bolted back to the library in blind panic and hid under a desk, shakily dialing 911. When police arrived, they found no signs of a struggle or foul play, no drag marks, no fluids, nothing except a very shaken up Michael. The supply closet and hallway were totally clean, cleared out with no evidence of any kind. To this day, Michael has no explanation for what he witnessed that morning, but he hasn't forgotten. And let's just say he never showed up to school that early ever again. <laughs> Curse of the Black Mirrors, this next story took place out in Bakersfield, California, and it involves an incredibly creepy and seemingly cursed artifact from the school's drama department. It was shared by former drama student Becky. Like a lot of theater kids, Becky spent pretty much every waking hour hanging around the high school's auditorium and backstage areas when she wasn't in class. Whether it was rehearsing lines, painting sets, or just killing time between shows, the drama crowd practically lived in that space. One of the props that had been kicking around the prop room for years was this old vintage vanity with three angled black oval mirrors. It was definitely an antique piece and had this super sinister, foreboding vibe that made it a pretty creepy prop for a high school play. Most of the drama kids just referred to it as the Black Mirrors. Well, during Becky's junior year, 
her drama teacher decided to incorporate the Black Mirror's prop into their production of an updated, modern retelling of the Bloody Mary urban legend. And right from the first rehearsals, some seriously weird, unexplainable stuff started happening whenever that prop was present. First, there were the technical issues that seemed to plague every practice where the mirrors were on stage. Lighting rigs would malfunction, sound equipment would suddenly cut out, just error after error that was never an issue when rehearsing scenes without the Black Mirror's prop. But it went way beyond just technical difficulties. Several cast and crew members reported having nightmares or sleep paralysis episodes after being exposed to the mirrors for long periods. Becky remembers several times waking up in the night, unable to move with the terrifying sense that something, or someone, was standing over her bed just staring. Perhaps the most disturbing incident happened during one of the last dress rehearsals before opening night. In the climactic scene, the lead, actress is supposed to recite the rhyme while staring into the black mirrors, beckoning a demonic entity. But toward the end of the scene, the lead suddenly stopped, frozen, and her face contorted into a look of sheer terror as if she saw something truly horrifying in those mirrors. She started screaming hysterically and clawing at her face in panic before finally passing out cold. When she was revived, the actress kept babbling about seeing her own dead face staring back at her from the mirrors. She ended up having a total breakdown and had to withdraw from the play. After that, the school banned the use of the black mirrors prop altogether and had the mirrors removed and destroyed. But supposedly, some crew members who handled them started developing strange health issues, insomnia, and recurring nightmares about ghastly figures emerging from those cursed-looking glasses. So whether it was an authentic paranormal event or just an extremely haunting theatrical prop, those black mirrors sure lived up to their ominous reputation. Let's just say no one involved with that play was too eager to gaze into any mirrors for a good long while after that experience. The Schoolyard Skinwalker, all right guys, for our third and final tale, we're heading out to the Navajo Nation in New Mexico. And I'm warning you now, this one is absolutely bonkers, like nothing you've ever heard before. It comes from a woman named Lily who was a high school senior back in 2009. Like most high schools, Lily's was located a little ways outside of town, surrounded by patches of desert and mesas. And with limited transportation in and out of the Navajo territory, most of the students ended up having to hang around campus pretty late in the evening waiting for rides home after sports practices, club meetings, or whatever. Well, Lily was one of those students who often got stuck killing time on campus until the last possible minute before her parents could swing by and pick her up in the early evenings. And being in such a remote, isolated area, the school's outdoor courtyards, parking lots, and athletic fields would be pretty much totally deserted once the sun went down. On multiple occasions over the last few months of Lily's senior year, she started noticing some incredibly bizarre stuff happening in the darkness outside the school while she was waiting to get picked up. It would start with her catching glimpses of some kind of large, inhuman figure lurking at the edges of the athletic fields or racing across the parking lot on all fours in a very animalistic, erratic way that was definitely not normal human movement. At first, she dismissed it as her eyes just playing tricks on her in the dark. But the sightings of this mysterious, beast-like figure just kept happening growing progressively more frequent and more bizarre over time. Sometimes Lily would see it standing upright, watching her through the windows with a sickening grin and these unsettling, glowing eyes that seemed to bore directly into her soul. Other times, she'd turn around and find the creature had seemingly teleported, appearing right behind her just crouching there, mere feet away, letting out these guttural growls and snarls that sent chills down Lily's spine. On multiple occasions, she spotted it digging through the school's dumpsters with its bare hands and feasting on the contents, ripping into garbage bags and devouring things a normal animal simply would not eat. As terrifying as these close encounters were, Lily didn't dare tell anyone about them at first. That is, until some of the other students started corroborating her sightings as well. Kids would show up to class pale as a ghost, recounting seeing this grotesque, hunched over creature stalking the premises leaving behind footprints that appeared to have two feet facing forward and two feet facing backward. Eventually, campus security got involved after multiple people reported the disturbing beast. But no matter how many guards walked the perimeter, 
or how many cameras they set up to catch this thing on video, it always seemed to evade being captured or seen by anyone other than the students. That is, until one night in mid-April when two guards were patrolling the back athletic fields in a cart and never showed up to their rotation. A frantic search was launched, and the guards were eventually found in a shed, unconscious and unresponsive. As they were loaded into an ambulance, one of the guards kept muttering something about a wild man with glowing eyes attacking them. After that incident, the school essentially shut down all after-hours activities until the end of the year. Too many people had seen something they simply could not explain or rationalize during those late nights on campus. And for Lily and the other students who endured those sightings and encounters, they know in their bones that what they saw wasn't just some wild animal or random person in a suit trying to scare people. Whatever that thing was, it was something else entirely. Something not human and something not of this world. So those are three seriously creepy true horror stories, straight from the hallowed halls and schoolyards of average high schools across the country. Let me know in the comments if you guys have had any similarly freaky encounters or run-ins with the unexplained from your high school days. And be sure to like and subscribe for more terrifying real-life horror stories coming your way very soon. Until next time, you've been warned.